to my channel. My name is Ashley and I am the crochet designer slash business strategist here behind a crafty concept. If this is your very first time watching one of my videos, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. Here on this channel, I provide free crochet patterns and business tips to help crocheters take their hobby and turn it into a jobby. In today's video, we have another free crochet pattern and it is a new design for the crafty gift pocket pattern line that we've got going on right now. And I asked over on Instagram which design people wanted to see next and the most votes was the frog, so that is what this video is for. This is the Crafty Frog gift pocket. He's got his little eyes. Here he is on the back, and you can put small gifts inside like candy or gift cards or hand sanitizer, like all kinds of different small gifts will fit in here really nicely. It is a great way to step up your gifting game or market them to your customers as a great way to step up their gifting game. We have a bunch of different designs on the channel already. I'm gonna be putting out a whole lot more, so go ahead and subscribe while you're hanging out so you do not miss a single one of them. Also, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you watch till the very end of this video because I'm gonna tell you how you can get your hands on a very particular freebie made just for Gift Pocket to help you sell them at your next market or in your Etsy shop. Let's hop on over to my table and see what you need to make your very own Crafty Frog gift pocket. Here's what you will need to make your own little frog gift pocket. You're going to need two colors of green yarn. This is Hobby Lobby's Yarn Be Soft and Sleek and this is Hobby Lobby's I Love This Yarn. I'm not sure of the color names, but if you go to Hobby Lobby, I'm sure you'll be able to pick them out. I wanna say this one might be called like jalapeno, but I'm truly not sure. This one might be called sage. You're gonna need a G 4.0 millimeter crochet hook. This one is Clover Amore brand. This is my favorite hook brand to work with. Highly recommend it. You're gonna need a tapestry needle to help you sew in all of your tails, a pair of scissors. You may need this graph. You can get it in the blog post or the ad-free PDF that goes with this pattern. You will also need some puff paint. This is optional, but this is what I will be using to put the little pupils on my frog's eyes and the mouth and nose. I will be using the puff paint because it is faster. This one was made being embroidered. So you're welcome to embroider it if you would like. I'm gonna do puff paint because it is much faster. So grab your crochet hook and your outer green color. So not your belly, but your other color that you're gonna be using. So we're gonna start with a foundation foundation single crochet of 10. And I'm just gonna have this kind of hanging out so we can reference it when we need to. We're gonna start by making a slip knot. Okay, now we're gonna chain two, one, two. We're gonna insert our hook into the first chain. Grab our yarn, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through one. That's where our next stitch is gonna go in that pull through one space we just made. Yarn over, pull through two. So next we're gonna insert our hook into that space we made when we pulled through one right here. Grab our yarn, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through one. Yarn over, pull through two, that's two. We're gonna do that until we have a total of 10 stitches. You may notice that I yarn under Instead of the traditional yarn over, that's just how I taught myself. It is personal preference. You can yarn under or over however you would like, and it will not affect the finished outcome of your frog pocket. This is just how I like to do it. So if I say yarn over, but I'm actually yarning under, just do whichever one you want to do your personal preference. But we're gonna keep going until we have a total of 10 foundation single crochets. There's 10, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Then we're going to chain one and turn our work. For row two, we are going to increase in the first stitch with our same color green. So an increase is just two single crochet stitches in the exact same space just like that. And then we're gonna single crochet one more, but we're not gonna finish it. We're gonna drop our green and we're gonna grab our second color of green here. And we're gonna finish out the stitch with our belly green, the belly color. Now we're gonna single crochet six 
with the lighter green working over your darker green. We're gonna be carrying our darker green for every, every row of the light green. So just working over the dark green and the stitches at the same time. And I will be yarning over specifically for color changes because I think it's cleaner. So we're gonna do six single crochets with our belly color. Four, five, and six. Now we're not gonna finish out the sixth stitch. We're gonna drop our belly color green and we're gonna pick up our dark color green, but you wanna make sure it's nice and taut first. So I'm gonna pull it and you can feel it underneath these stitches tightening up. You do not want to pull it too much because if you do, it's gonna crinkle. We don't want it to crinkle. We just want it to be flush with our work, okay? And then finish out the stitch with our dark green right here. Then we have another single crochet with the dark green. You can leave your, your lighter green just hanging out back there. And then a single crochet increase is where we're gonna end. So that means two single crochets in the same stitch. We are going from 10 to 12 stitches. That is the end of row two. Chain one and turn our work. Row three is gonna be the exact same as row two, but no increases. So three, six, three. So we're gonna do three with our dark green. One, two, start the third, pull the dark green to the back, pick up your belly green, and finish out the stitch. Now we're going to single crochet across for six, but making sure to go over our darker green, our body green, because we're carrying that with us. We need it to be on this side so we can finish out the row. We're going to do this for six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, and we're not gonna finish out that stitch. We're gonna pull our belly green to the back side of our work, swap it out for our darker green, our body green, finish out the stitch. Then we have three body green stitches. One, two, three, chain one, and turn our work. Now for row four, we're gonna increase in the first stitch, so just just two single crochets together. Single crochet in the next stitch. We're not gonna finish it out though. We're gonna drop our body green, pick up our belly green, and finish out the stitch. Now we are going to crochet eight with our belly green, working over our body green, just carrying that right along with us. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Drop the lighter green, pick up your body green, make sure it's taut but not tight, and finish out the stitch. Single crochet one with our body green and then single crochet increase in the last space. Okay, this is what it looks like. Chain one and turn our work. The next row is gonna be three, eight, three again, but no increases. So we're gonna single crochet three with our body green. One, two, and three. Don't finish the third one. Bring it to the back. Pick up your light color, your belly green. Finish out the stitch. Now working over our yarn. Single crochet eight times with your belly green. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Don't finish the stitch. So drop your belly green, bring it to the wrong side of your work. Pull back out your body green. Give it a little tug, just a little baby tug. Finish out the stitch and then single crochet three times with our body green. One, two, and three. Chain one and turn your work. For the next row, we are gonna start with an increase again. 
two single crochets in the first stitch. This is our last increase row. Two single crochets in the first stitch. Then we're going to single crochet one with our body green, but we're going to drop the body green and pick up the belly green and finish out the stitch. Now we're going to single crochet with the belly green over the body green for 10 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Drop the belly green, pick up the body green, making sure everything's clean under there. Finish out the stitch, one single crochet, and then a single crochet increase. And this row has 16 total stitches. This is what we got. Now we're going to chain one and turn our work. So rows seven, eight, nine, and 10, four rows are going to be three body green, 10 belly green, three body green. We're gonna do that for four rows where we just do three green, then switch to your belly green for 10 stitches, but make sure to crochet over your body green we're going to do that for four rows and then we will come back and get ready to start our decreases. Okay, I just finished row 10. This is what we got. We're going to chain one and turn our work. For row 11, we're still not decreasing, but we do do a little bit different for the belly green, so I thought we'd do this here on camera. We're going to start with our body green, but this time we're going to do four single crochets instead of three. One, two, three three and four, right there. Now we're gonna switch to our belly green to finish out the stitch, and we're gonna single crochet across for eight of our belly green instead of 10 this time. We're just kinda closing in on the belly green. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. But we're gonna drop our belly green, pick up our body green, finish out the stitch, and then we're gonna single crochet four times. One, two, three, four. Chain one and turn our work. Now we are going to start some decreases. So you can cut your belly green yarn. We won't be using that anymore. You can leave a very long tail. If you do not like the look of these color changes, you can leave a very, very long tail of your belly green and then use a tapestry needle to kind of like clean that up if you want to. I like to leave mine as is. I think it looks fine, but if you would like to do that, you're welcome to play around with that. I'm just gonna leave a tail long enough for sewing in. So the next row, we are gonna decrease over the first two stitches. So we're gonna take the first two and make them just one. So in insert your hook into the first stitch, grab your arm, pull up a loop, Insert your hook into the second stitch, grab your yarn, pull up a loop. You now have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through all three loops. Then we're just gonna single crochet across until we have two left, and then we're gonna decrease over the last two. And we are going from 16 to 14 stitches. Okay, we've got two left, so we're gonna just decrease over these last two just like the first one. Pull through all three, chain one, and turn our work. The next row, we are just gonna put one single crochet in each stitch all the way across, again, for a total of 14 stitches. Chain one and turn our work. Now we're gonna do another decrease row. We're gonna go from 14 to 12. So we're gonna decrease over the first two stitches, then single crochet across, and then decrease over the last two stitches. Last two here. Okay, chain one, turn our work. 
Now we're just going to single crochet one time in each stitch all the way down for a total of 12 stitches. Okay, chain one and turn our work. Now we're going to decrease from 12 to 10. So we're going to decrease over the first two stitches, single crochet down, and then we're going to decrease over the last two stitches, giving us 10 stitches in the row right here. There we go. Chain one and turn our work. Now we're just going to single crochet one time in each stitch all the way down again for a total of 10 stitches. Chain one and turn our work. We have three rows left and each of them are a decrease row so we're going to go eight, six, four and then we'll be finished with the front piece of our frog. So we're going to decrease over the first two stitches, single crochet down, now we're going to decrease over these two stitches to make it eight total stitches in the row. Chain one, turn our work, decreasing down to six. So over the first two, single crochet across, and then over the last two for a decrease. Chain one, turn our work. And the last row just has four stitches. Decrease, single, single, and then decrease. And that is everything for the front piece of our little frog so you can leave a tail long enough to sew in and clip your yarn. The front piece of our frog is complete. Look how cute. To make the two back pieces, it's just like the front piece without the color changes. So for the back bottom piece, we got the back bottom and the back top. For the back bottom piece, you're going to start with a foundation single crochet of 10, just like we did for the front piece, and you're going to go from rows 1 through 11, following the same pattern that we did over here, but do not change your colors. Then you can tie off, leaving a tail long enough to sew in, and then for the top piece, you're going to start with a foundation single crochet of 16, then you're going to basically be doing rows 8 through 20 of the front piece, but without any color changes. So foundation single crochet 16, that will be your row eight technically. And then you do the rest nine through 20 just by following the same steps that we did for this guy. But do not cut your yarn because we will be using it to do our assembly here in a minute. So we'll do these off of camera, but we do need to do our eyes together here on camera. So we're gonna grab our light green yarn or your belly green, whatever you chose for your belly. We're gonna start by making a magic circle. We'll do it very slowly. and chain one to secure. Now we're gonna single crochet six times into the center of our magic circle. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now we're going to pull our magic circle closed. And the rest of these are gonna be made in the round. So you can use a stitch marker if you would like. I'm gonna place a stitch marker in my sixth single crochet. That way I know when the next round ends. Now we're gonna put an increase in each stitch all the way around. So two single crochet stitches starting right here in the first one. And we're gonna go from six stitches to 12 stitches because we're gonna increase in each of the six stitches. So we're gonna place two single crochets right here. One, and then the second one in that exact same spot. Two, that is our increase. We're gonna do that all the way around. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and then we're going to increase in the stitch with our stitch marker. That's our last one. 11, 12. Move your stitch marker up so you know when the row ends or the round. Now we're going to do three rows of just 12 single crochets. So one time in each stitch 
all the way around for three rounds. So every time you get to your stitch marker, that ends around, and you're going to want to move it up. So one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Into the stitch with the stitch marker. Move your stitch marker up and do that two more times for a total of five rounds. So I'm going to do two more rounds of 12 and then I'll be right back. Okay, and this is what we have so far. We can go ahead and sew in this first tail here using a tapestry needle. And I just like to go under these stitches of our magic circle here and making sure it is extra secure. And then you can clip off your tail as soon as you get it sewn in to your liking. Go ahead and snip that off. Okay. And flip it right side out. Now I was looking at this eye compared to my eye that I used previously. And this one is bigger. So the previous eye was a little bit smaller. So I'm assuming I did five single crochets and then ten four rows of 10 instead of six and then 12. So if you want your eyes to be a little bit smaller, maybe just do five single crochets in your magic circle. For this one, we're gonna do six and we're gonna see, we can compare them when we're done. So now you can tie off. And I just like to put a slip stitch in the same space of my last stitch and tie off that way. Your tail does not have to be that long just long enough to sew it in, and then that completes your little eye. You're gonna need two of these, unless you want a one-eyed frog. I'm gonna go ahead and make my second eye, and then both my bottom back piece and top back piece off camera, and then we will come back and assemble everything together. Okay, now we have all of our pieces. We have our two eyes, our front, piece, our back top piece, and our back bottom piece. We're going to start assembling everything together. This guy is made inside out, so when we flip him right side out, he will look beautiful. We are going to start by putting our pieces right sides together. So this is the wrong side because it has our tails. This is the right side. That is going to be facing the right side of this guy. This guy's right side is the opposite and so this tail needs to be opposite of this tail. So this is the right side, the right sides are touching. I hope that makes sense. For the eyeball, we're gonna put it into our little frog sandwich here with the right side touching the front piece. So that way when we flip it inside out, or I mean right side out, the right side is showing where we want it to be. Also, when we add our bottom back piece, it's gonna go on top of the top back piece like this. That way when we flip it right side out, the top back piece is over it. We're gonna go through the first stitch on our front piece, two stitches here of our first eyeball, just like that, and then the back top piece. Here we go, Lord have mercy. Okay, now this is where we're gonna place our first single crochet. We're going to go through all these stitches together. Pull through all of those spots on our hook and complete our single crochet. That's one. We need to do this for a total of six times going through the eyeball stitches. So we're just going to keep lining up our stitches together. There were 12 stitches around the eye, so we're going to do six and six. Okay. This is two. Keep everything nice and tight as you're working. This is three. Here we go. Making sure to go through all the pieces. 
for five and then the last one it's a little weird because it's those two stitches are very close to one another okay and then I'm gonna do a seventh single crochet just to get one stitch past our eye here okay now let's take a look at what we've got boop looking good that's what it's gonna be looking like when we finish her up so close her back up we've done seven stitches because we did six through the eyes and then one extra one we're gonna do two more and then we're gonna grab this piece so two more stitches just going through the front piece and the top back piece only that's one and then the second one here for two now we're going to grab the third piece here. So I'm going to start going through these two and then grab our third one. And this one is going to go this way. So the tail should be on the side that we're working on. And right there, the very edge, the very side of this stitch. It's a little hard to get to. Okay. And that's where we're going to place our single crochet. We're going to do four single crochet stitches going through all three of these pieces. Okay, that's one. Two. That's three, and last one. Four, four. Okay, perfect. Now, if you're looking at your graph, the first six stitches, we're working along this side here. The first six stitches, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we did the one to hold, and then we did two more, then we did four, one, two, three, four. So now we are going down this side here and it's just through the front and the back bottom only and we're gonna go all the way around until we get back to this side. So we'll count together. I don't know how many it's gonna be. I could count on the graph, but we'll just figure it out as we go. That's one. Two. three, four, five, yeah, it's seven, I remember. Six and seven, that brings us down to the very end of our frog, the bottom, and then we're gonna work working across the bottom and the good news is we don't have to make our own stitches for this spot. This spot we can actually go into the actual stitches that were created. So we're gonna put two single crochet stitches in the first spot, making sure to line up the pieces together. Should be 10 across the bottom. So this first spot, we are gonna put two single crochets together. This is just gonna give it a nice little rounded effect, okay? Then we're gonna single crochet eight. Just lining the stitches up. This part's the easiest part. All the way down for eight stitches. Okay, and this is eight. And then we have one stitch left right here on the bottom. And that is where we're gonna place two single crochet stitches together just like we did in the first one. So placing two single crochets right there. One and 
too, but I'm gonna move that tail out of my way. Just single crochet around it, perfect. Now we're gonna go back up this other side for seven, and then we're gonna go four going through all three pieces, then we're gonna do three going through the top and the back top only, and then the last six on the side will be the eyeball, and then we're gonna go across the top and then it's attached. So we're gonna do seven, four, three, six. But we're gonna do it together. So we're gonna start over here for one, connecting the two sides together. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now we're gonna go through all three pieces, making sure they're all sandwiched in there together. Okay, one, you can see all three of them there. And we're gonna do that for four stitches. One, two, three, and then the fourth one. out of the way. Okay, now we have three stitches before we grab our next eyeball. So one, two, and then three here. Now we're gonna grab our eyeball and it's gonna go in this way. So in, if you had x-ray vision and you could, you could see what it's going to look like, it will be in there like this. So I'm going to go into the front piece and then into the side of the eye like this. And then that's going to go tucked down in there nice, nice and neat. And then into the back piece. So we're going through all those stitches together. We're gonna do that for six, just like we did the first eye. That's five, and we have one more for six. Okay, and now we just have our stitches across the top, and then we're done. So we're gonna put two single crochets in this first stitch, just like this. So we're gonna put two here, and then two on the last one. So that's one, and then the second one in the same spot. That's a little tight, but we're gonna two and then two by themselves, one of the next two stitches, one and then two. Okay, and then in the last little spot, which is right where we joined, we're gonna put two single crochet stitches there and then we're done. One and two, join into the top of our very first single crochet. And now we can cut our yarn, leaving a tail long enough to sew in and tie off. Okay, the moment of truth. Let's see how she looks. I'm nervous. So far, so good. <laughs> okay, and boop. Look. Look how cute. Okay, takes some shaping. We're going to have to sew in all these tails. Let's do our shaping here. Ok, 
Okay. Oh, look how sweet. Little frog. Little frog baby. Now we are going to sew in all of our tails first. Flip it back wrong side out and sew in all of your tails. And then we'll come back on screen together and add our little eyeballs and our little nose holes and our smile. If you wanted to add a little tongue like in the drawing, you can grab a red puff paint. If you wanted to, I have some pink. I think I'm just gonna leave the tongue off for now, but you could easily add that if you wanted to. You can get creative. I'm gonna go sew in all of my tails off camera just like I did when I showed you how to use sew it in for the eye. I'm gonna do the same thing, just making sure I don't like accidentally sew my pieces together where they shouldn't be together, and then I'll come back and we will do our puff paint. Okay, I just finished sewing in all of my tails. I'm gonna pop them back out do a little bit of shaping, and then get ready for our puff paint. So I have a full video tutorial showing how to do the puff paint eyes. That also comes with a free resource you can get of an eye template so you can practice. I will put a link to that down below if you wanna check that out. This is just gonna be a fairly quick run through, but if you wanna check out that video, it will be linked down below for you. I will be using black and white puff paint. These are linked down below for you. For my eyes, I'm just gonna do black blobs with little white highlights on them after the black dries a little bit. And then for my smile, just a, a, black, a little black smile and then two little dots for the nose holes here. And this is what it looks like embordered. If you wanted to go that route, you're welcome to do that. I think the puff paint is a little bit faster. And if you're selling these, faster is gonna be better because then you're gonna have higher profit margins. Yay, money. Okay, let's start with the little smile. So I just like to kind of eyeball where I think it's gonna go. And I also like to give my puff paint a little pre pre-squirt to get like an air bubble out so it doesn't blob all over my things. Um, so I'm just gonna like, whoop. I think I'm gonna maybe add some little specks to help me line it up. So I'm gonna add this little speck in the middle there. It's gonna be the bottom point. And then this little speck for the top. And then this little speck over here. And then I'm just gonna kinda connect the dots a little bit. Okay, easy peasy. My, my middle speck is a little high, so I'm just gonna make my mouth a little bit wider, like thicker. Okay, look at that. Very cute. Perfect, okay. Now don't bump into it or it will smudge. For my little nose holes, I'm just gonna kinda, probably right here for one and then symmetrical-ish for the other side. Two little froggy nose holes. That is not necessary if you don't want to do little nose holes. It's super subtle, so it might not even be really that noticeable. Okay, and now for the eyes. So I'm really just kind of winging it here. It's very nerve wracking, but the more you do it, the better you get at it, the more confident you get. Okay, and I'll try to match it on the other side. That's the hardest part. Also, it is handmade, so like, it's not gonna be exactly perfect because we are not machines, we are people. If it was done by a machine, it would be more perfect. Okay, how's that look? <laughs> I hope it looks okay. So this guy's a little bit more blobby, this guy's a little bit more perfect, but I'm gonna have to blob him up to kind of make him match the other side a little bit more. I think that's what we're gonna go for. Okay. And then once that dries a little bit, I will go back in with my white puff paint and add the little highlights. So it's gonna look something like this. Once it dries, just two little dots on the same side of the eye. That's what I'm gonna do once it dries. But I'm gonna give it some dry time. It does take about 12 to 24 hours. I know that's a big range. I haven't like gauged it exactly, but let it dry for a long time. That's the point. Let it dry for a long time and then it will be good to go. 
But that is it for making your crafty frog gift pocket. I hope you love them as much as I do. I think they are so super duper cute. I have a freebie for you that goes with this pattern. So let's hop on over to my yarn wall and I will tell you how you can get your hands on it. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you love the new crafty frog gift pocket pattern. If you make any and post any pictures on social media, I would love to see them. You can tag me at a crafty concept on almost all social media platforms and I will check it out. If you like this pattern, be sure to check out all of the other Crafty Pocket patterns I have on this channel already. We have the cactus, the pencil, the cow, the egg, and the chick egg. So all kinds of cute ones and I have a ton more in the works, so stay very tuned for those. As promised at the beginning of this video, I mentioned a freebie for you. If you sign up to my email list through the link below, you will be able to get the Crafty Gift Pocket product tags to help you market and sell your gift pockets at your next craft fair or even in your Etsy shops. There's a place on the back for you to put the price of your gift pocket and a place on the front that tells people what your gift pocket is. Because if they see a bunch of these hanging out in your shop or at your booth, they might not know what they are. Another fun thing you can do with these gift pockets is turn them into keychains to attach to diaper bags or backpacks or purses or whatever needs your ideal customer has. So keep that in mind as well if you would like to market these as keychains. That is a very fun way to market them. That's all I have for you today. Thanks for being here. Thanks for hanging out. Subscribe before you leave so you can see the next video when it goes live. We try to release them every single Friday. So fingers crossed, I will see you on Friday. Have a great day, a wonderful rest of your week, and I will see you in the next video.